Hi, Sister here with another video and I'm going to go over how to edit a filter and just go over some of the things that I've done in my filter, how to install a filter and things like that until Neversing finishes filter blade. I'm just getting so many people asking how they can like customize a little bit. So I'm going to just go over some generic advice and stuff like that and uh, how to install Neversync's filter. That's what I recommend. And yeah, hopefully you'll learn something about filters. So to start, you go and download this, boom. I'll put the link for this. You just click on the source code there and it'll download it. And uh, this is a filter file. And again, this is what makes loot look different in Path of Exile. So if you've ever seen a streamer, like their loot looks different than what yours does, well, that's what does it. So now once you've downloaded that, click here to open your filter file folder. It'll look like this. And then you should have a downloaded thing and you would drag this into this folder. So it'd be like my game is Path of Exile 2. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, there's a thing that could go wrong while doing this. You could have, if you have this ticked, hide extension for known filter types, it like, it's very important that it's dot filter and not dot txt. So it needs to actually be a dot filter. Then once you have that, it will boom, appear here and we can load it and save and that's installed. Now you have a filter, but what do you want to do if you want to actually edit this? So I have made my own filter from scratch. So I started out on day one. I just did this. Uh, and I would literally in notepad, just be like, if I don't want to see it, I'm just adding it one by one and slowly my filter grew. And eventually I was not seeing any of the things that I didn't want to see. This is a bad way of doing it and takes a lot of time, but I was playing on a warrior and I realized as soon as I got to maps that I really need a filter for this game. So I just quickly put everything in here. So anytime I saw something, probably if Neversink saw this, he would just shudder. But this was just hiding everything I didn't want to see. This would probably make Neversink recoil. So I'm actually going to teach you how not to do this. And <laughs> But it's getting, my filter is getting a lot better now. But I basically, what I started doing after that was I would have like an early version of one of Neversync PoE 1 filters open. And I would start going like, yeah, I like the color on that. Or I like that. Well, I actually have different sounds. But uh, I would start doing that. And there's still some jank in my filter that could be a lot better. But I just made it work. And I want to teach you just some things that can be helpful for you. Then again, Neversync's filter will always be better. Um, but particularly what will be useful is how do you customize and make things a little bit different? So I'm going to show you a few things. So for example, especially while leveling a new character, I might not care, or I might care about, uh, Floss during the campaign, or I might care about Floss in the end game. And maybe I don't care about them during the campaign. So right now this is hide and then area level less than or equals to 64. And then for example, this would be greater than or equals to 64. So it depends what you want. Easy way to remember this, it's like the way I was taught in school, this is a little crocodile. So this is the crocodile eating the area level, right? So it's a greater than or equals to, and this is the area level being the crocodile less than or equals to 64. Um, that's how I remember it, crocodiles. Either way, less than, greater than. So what this currently does on the upper one is that this is going to hide uh, every flash during the campaign. Maps start at level 65 area level. So this is what would show in the top right. So currently we would be hiding all flasks that are normal or magic in rarity during the campaign. If I remove the top line here and just have the small one, it'd be showing all the flasks during the campaign and then hide them as soon as we get to the end game. So these can be very, very useful things. And you have a lot of different uh, classes. So I use this to hide. Um, I think they'll probably be the most useful for people is this line. I, I really don't like hiding rares. I don't feel super overwhelmed by rares, so I don't hide any. I'm probably getting to the point where I will start hiding some though. So this section right now, what it does is it hides all maces, staves, wands, quivers, bows, focuses, scepter and um, it'll only hide normal or magic ones. And if it has one socket or less, it'll hide. And if it's less than one quality. So currently this would show all with one to 20 quality or with two sockets. Like I didn't really care about picking up a one quality thing. Uh, and this is or, right? So it doesn't have to have both sockets and quality. And then for example, 
I would do something like this for a while, where now I'm showing if it has 10 or higher quality, right? Because then I get more scraps. But uh, I'm at the point where I have so many um, scraps that I've completely removed the quality thing. And I honestly, I might, no, I probably still want sockets. But there are actually some scepters I want to see. And I want to see some ones as well, particularly when blue. And the way the filter works is in order of priority. So the whatever's at the top takes precedence. So above this hide, I actually have show a tuned wand and siphoning wand by base type. So base type equals a tuned wand and siphoning wand. And I want to specifically see the rarity of normal and magic. I'm not really doing anything special to any of my rares. I'm not changing the way they look. I think they're fine the way they are. So yeah. And then the border color and background colors, to be perfectly honest on all of mine, I have just been changing random numbers. You can open paint and go here and then pick your color here and be like, oh, that is a nice purple. So that's 36, 23, 120, and then always 250 or 255 at the end. I think that's the opacity. Uh, or you can be like, ah, oh, that's a disgusting green. I will definitely notice that. Or like, that's a good yellow for rares. You know, you can pick your color that way. But, but that's one example. And then font size is how big. It goes up to 45. And I'm also, I particularly care about the wand being item level at least 81. So here I have that it needs to be item level 81 or bigger to show. And again, I'm not hiding any rares. So it'll actually show like every 78, 75, 65, whatever uh, of a rare wand. Because I'm never at any point hiding that. So even though I'm hiding ones and stuff, these are not hiding rares. But I could add mirror there. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, the reason for that, the reason I particularly care about item level 81, and this might be useful for you to learn as well, especially while editing your filter a little bit, is that I use PWDB2. I click on modifiers, and then we look at one-handed, and we look at ones, right? So now I can see that uh, the highest level for cold or lightning or anything like that is 81. Now you can get plus four all spells, and this happens on everyone. Um, but for example, only and attuned and siphoning is the only one that can get lightning. So that's why I particularly want to show those. I also want to see rattling scepter. And then as another example, I do care about the uh, rattling scepter at lower levels because I'm okay for my summoner to get a plus four. It still hasn't really had a weapon upgrade since Cruel, um, so I'm, I, I care less here. Now, I wanted to hide relics, especially normal and magic ones. You can't hide them. So I set them to set font size 5 instead. For some reason, while you're inside Sanctum, you can't hide them at all. So I just made them tiny. Now. Another example of something uh, that's pretty useful, and there are multiple ways of doing this. So we do have more things like we have area level that we showed and we have drop level. Now, what is drop level? It's a new thing in PoE2 and it's uh, not required to, it, it's not the required level of the item, nor is it the item level. It is the required level of the white item. So this is useful particularly because I am trying to get a low level maces with really high like plus six or plus seven to melee skills. So I really want to play a totem build at some point and that doesn't really benefit from anything else on the weapon than plus melee skills, right? That's the only stat I want. So ideally, the best case scenario for me is a driftwood maul with plus seven because this just requires 20 strength. So with the um, the keystone that lets you have two two-handers, giant's blood, this would only cost 60 strength. So I don't necessarily have to giga invest into this. So this is pretty useful. So what I've done then first, I would just name the base types. So here I have show all the base types that I care about, but this should work as well. Uh, this is drop level 36 and below class mace. Both of these load, both of them should functionally do the same thing. Cause I don't really care that much about like, I'll still show the expert bases and stuff, but there's no way that my build is easily going to be able to get, let's say 700 strength, right? That is going to be quite tricky for me. So that's why I particularly care about these. So I wanted to make sure that you realize there might be reasons to have low level bases as well. And that, yeah, there's sometimes where you just don't really care if it's 
a low level base or a high level base. Another thing, you might be playing SSF and you might care more or less about certain currencies. So for example, I heard a lot of people were talking about like armor scraps might be more important to them and that they might not be highlighted enough. So you could take armor scrap and just move it from here and move it up to the same currency as like gem cutter prism, arm, like all of these. So it's actually quite easy to like just edit things and move things around like that. You're very unlikely to be able to break anything with that. So that's a pretty big one because especially on solo cell phone, I've been really, really struggling on, um, on finding that type of thing. Um, same with, let's say trying to find a white base, you can just like, put that if there's something you're just really really looking for you want to find it you can put that at the top of your filter another example um and and this is why like filters are nice to be like a little bit more build specific in poe2 in poe1 you just care about kind of the same basis for everything and you only need one or two and then you can craft until you have what you want here for example i'm mostly running energy shield builds that's our best form of defense right now so i'm doing show base type i have the expert hexers robe the feather tiara expert feathered sandals like all the best energy shield bases i probably should have the two other energy shield bases as well the the one with the recharge implicit and the one with the mana regen they're not bad either but uh, currently this is what i'm doing and i actually care about lower than 81 on this because energy shield if i recall um shows max level at 79 i'll double check that with you right now so if we look here you can see that life is the highest at 82 which if i don't want life it's just a waste anyway uh we have resistances at 82 so that's good uh, and then chaos rest at 81 but here you can see already at 79 it can get uh highest there and spirit 78 is max so pretty useful anyway uh so i have all of these showing i'm also showing pretty much all energy shield boots at level 81 i'm very very much looking for 35 movement speed boots what i'm trying to get there is just any useful boot with 35 then vol it for 40 so i would get 40 movement speed volerbs obviously have a chance to ruin your item but one of the implicit changes it can do is five percent more movement speed i'm guessing neversync does something like this already but i might as well show it especially for people already doing a little bit more editing I'm hiding, and again, you'll see that I'm mostly always just doing things to normal and magic items. That's what clutters me up the most. I, like I said, don't really want to hide rares. So we'll start with the first one. So here, anything that has one or more armor on it. So this will be hybrid as well. So armor innovation and uh, armor and energy shield. But if it's normal or magic and it doesn't have two sockets and it doesn't have more than 10 quality. So again, either of these, not both, it'll be hidden. So I don't really care about any armor evasion, armor energy shield any pure armor um, but i do want two socket gear i want more of those and i want more uh, armor scraps so i'm showing those and this is regardless of item level so this will sh like hide like this at low levels as well now that would mean i would need a new filter if i'm actually playing a build that cares about armor gear currently i'm filtering out pretty much everything energy shield that is lower than 79 so it's 78 i don't care about it this is because i just showed that at 79 i can get the highest level of energy shield i might change this in the future to only show the highest level energy shield basis but particularly for boots i kind of want to see everything i don't care that much about the energy shield in my boots I just want 35 movement speed same thing here for evasion and there are loads of things like this you can play around with and again, remember like moving things between is pretty useful. Base type is pretty easy to use. Then you don't need to worry about the class of the item and stuff like that. And yeah, it honestly is not as intimidating as it looks. Making it from scratch uh, and by copy pasting like everything from scratch from like something like Never Sync can be a little bit more tricky, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. And a lot of this was like pretty okay to write from scratch slash using copy paste. Having something like either looking at my filter or even better, never syncs to get like a idea of what to do with it. And like you can see here that I've like copy pasted several of these from never syncs uh, POE one filters and just changed some of the wording. It helps a lot. If you have any programming background as well, obviously it'll be a lot easier, but I find it very easy with, uh, with having another filter to look at, to make it exactly what I want. And I do recommend like changing your filter a little bit to suit the character you're playing is a lot more important, 
in PoE2 than it is in PoE1. In PoE1, I would have very generic filters. I would never have a build specific filter. But in PoE2, I really want to show whites and magic items for the build that I'm playing because I've gotten so much of my gear by thro throwing a quick like transmute or an alchemy on some gear. Either way, a little bit hectic maybe and a little bit all over the place, but hopefully it helps some of you. Um, either way, so if you liked the video, thanks for watching, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.